Hey, nut huggers, that's you. Yep. If you're if you look down here and you and your little subscribe button is grayed out because you've already subscribed, you're a nut hugger. Oh yeah, big Welcome. old nut hugger. them nuts you're gonna love my nuts man okay. it's, been, it's been a while since we've recorded on a sofa i know it's different it's something feels off about it, it does well this is back to where we were from our first video that's true a different sofa than that first video but the roots nonetheless the roots of the nuts yeah ew. the nutty roots the nut roots ew. one thing we're thankful for is shitty racing games because without that we never would have started this at all we're also thankful for shitty lighting yeah. Shitty microphones. Yeah, basically. Shitty cameras. Shitty setups. We're just, we're well, we're very okay. thankful for shit. Our, because without shit, there wouldn't be poop jokes. Ooh, good point. And without poop jokes, society wouldn't have evolved to dick jokes. And dick jokes are probably one of the greatest things of all time. Oh yeah. You know, our equipment in and of itself is not shitty. It's the manner of which we set everything up. Oh yeah, up of, of course. We basically take good, sometimes expensive equipment and half-ass it together as well we can. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's I think a professional could probably take the amount of equipment we have and actually make something worthwhile. They can make a fucking movie <laughs> with this the stuff. Munchies grade movie. Maybe a little better than Munchies. I don't know about that. We could do that on a fucking cell phone. You could film a better Munchies. Come on. There's no such thing as a better Munchies. A couple of years ago, I was thankful for flea markets, but... You know, that's basically turned into live-action eBay. Well, so. unless you're Zach, then you can just shop for fucking everything. I know. You no, know what? I, I wasn't on. just saying video games. He oh, buys, like, he shampoo buys and yeah. hair gel and condoms. I bought, I've actually bought shampoo and shit there before. Have you bought Once condoms? Bought, I've never bought his. Has he bought dick wraps? I don't know. Oh. Would you buy a condom from a flea market? What if it's lightly used? <laughs> and they just roll it back up and put it back in the packaging and staple like, it closed. Like, you know what's so funny is we don't actually come up with content before we turn on the camera. We just, we just turn it on and we just talk. And we just become stupid. <laughs> yeah, there was that period where over the past few years the flea markets have gone to shit. And Zach was successful because he was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm not just going for games. I'll go for household stuff. And he's a photographer, so he loves collecting old camera stuff, which yeah. is still... Fairly easy to find, I think, cheap, just because I think so few people are, like, familiar with that stuff. They don't know what to price it at. Right. But Zach was so consistent with it that, fuck, man, the past few times, he's found gold mines worth of that's, games. That's like, the problem with us, is, like, if we don't... If, we're, we're true Americans. We're instant yeah. gratification. Oh, yeah. If we don't get what we want after one or two <laughs> times, we're just like, this place blows. This place fucking this sucks. Place is I'm awful. never going I'm again. never going... Yeah, exactly. We are thankful for... Flea markets that yield results. Which, these days, are the flea markets in the boonies. Cause and even live, those, are, sometimes they're just kind of off. Yeah, I mean, we live in the metro Atlanta area. Hell, Kat and I live in Atlanta. There's When it comes to flea markets, even Goodwills, when you're close to a big city, a people, are, people are too in tune with like the online environment, fads and stuff going on. This thing on. right here. This thing right here Signals is a collector's... Fucking nightmare. It is. And here's the problem. When you're in Atlanta, it's one of the biggest cities in the country. There's almost nowhere you're not going to have a cell phone signal around here. But you go to a flea market, you know, out near the border of Alabama. You go up to South Carolina. The border of Alabama? Yeah. Is Donald Trump going to build a wall there? <laughs> but like, you go to these out in the middle of nowhere yeah. places. People ain't got no phone signal and... That's, you're in luck. Well, it's not so much that they don't have phone signal because it's 2017. There's almost no places in yeah, America that don't have phone between signal. Between Verizon it's, and it's mobile, people. Yeah. It's people who still have their flip phones. Yeah. Because those people do still exist. And we've seen them. It's flea so markets. great. Anyone who's watching who happens to live in Atlanta, if you haven't been, it's worth a trip. Sometimes you can get lucky. Don't get your hopes up, no. though. It's called Starlight Drive-In Theater. It's in a shit part of town, but every Saturday and Sunday morning they have a swap meet. And when we first started going, probably three, three and a half years ago, we started going together. It was awesome. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I got a Genesis with three games for like 15 bucks. It was a Model 1, too. Yeah, it, it was, was a Model really 1 cool. gen with power and two controllers. Yeah. And like like Mortal Kombat 3. There was a couple of different mm -hmm. games. They were really oh, yeah, good games that came with games. it. But like, I, 
you can't find a Genesis that someone took a dump on for less than a hundred dollars. I People found a scum. Jungle Green N64. You know the ones that they sell on eBay for like 70, 80 bucks for twenty dollars with a blue controller, and it worked. all its cords, and like a few random sports games, which I know they're not worth shit, but like that package for twenty bucks, like you was don't it, find that anymore. Was that the same day you found uh, Majora's Mask? The gold cart? No, no, for that three dollars. That was, was a different $2? day. It was two dollars. Two dollars. That was at a good gold will. cart, man. Um, in South Atlanta, is that where we were? Lee Street? Yeah, it was somewhere. Uh, we've we've been to that goodwill a couple of times since then, and never had that kind of luck. But really, what we're saying is, we're, we're thankful for how it used yeah. to be, and we're <laughs> hopeful that it will be that way again. I'm thankful for '90s television. Oh my Sonic god! Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. Power Rangers. I'm honestly thinking, even though every Mario Brothers Super Show. Oh my god, that show is phenomenal. Beetleborgs. I didn't watch it much, but I'm thankful for that theme song. Big Bad Beetleborgs. Big Bad Beetleborgs. I don't remember Jack. Chan I don't either. The show, but I'll never the forget that theme song. Even though people bitch about all the remakes and like the rehashes and stuff we're doing these days, I'm honestly thankful for movies like the new Power Rangers. Yeah. Things Even the like Ninja that. Turtles, the new ones, I know a lot of people give them hate. That first one, they're fun. The second one is a very enjoyable movie. Yeah, it's, a like, good... it's got Bebop and fucking Rocksteady for the first time ever in a movie. That's what a I'm live thankful action for. Movie. Bebop and Rocksteady in live action. That's I should have worn my Bebop movie. and Rocksteady shirt. Oh, you have a Bebop and Rocksteady shirt? Yeah, it just has Bebop and Rocksteady on it. That's awesome. Instead of wearing the Muppet Show, which is another great show, not from the 90s, but I'm still thankful for it. I, I mean, the, Mupp watching the Muppets Rose. have been around since forever. Muppet, Muppet Babies. Babies? Yes, exactly. Yes. Muppet Babies was Dude, a 90s I show. I loved Muppet Babies. I had a, when I was a little kid, I even had a little plush baby Kermit, I think. How, I don't remember if he talked or anything, but I remember that. How would you feel if they did a gritty reboot of Muppet Babies? How would they do it? I don't know. Michael Bay would find a way. So since Disney owns the Muppets and and they now own Star Wars, Ooh. you remember on the Muppet Show when they did when Star Wars came out and they mm -hmm. did that episode where Luke shows up in his uh, Bespin outfit. I'm a nerd. I remember <laughs> which outfit it was, but you know it's that brown tan outfit that yeah. he wore during his Vader fight, and it's just a whole you know episode of their show themed around Luke. Now that Disney owns both of these franchises. Let's make a feature-length version of that. Uh, Grown, like, old Mark Hamill and the Muppets reunite. Or we could just recast the entire Star Wars cast with no. Muppets. Maybe we cast Danny Trejo to play live-action Kermit the Frog. And no, no, no. What I, was think, what I was thinking on Muppet Babies, if, mm -hmm. if, they, recast, if we, they redid Muppet Babies as a gritty reboot, mm -hmm. Danny Trejo would be the nanny. So, <laughs> you'd never see his face. You'd just see, like, legs all the time. Cause you know they never showed the nanny's face. But I need to see Danny Trick. Can they like, like shot they his should uh, dual face cast onto his, uh, <laughs> on his cap? <laughs> so you'd have two Treo faces on what his name. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thankful that Star Wars is still going strong. I mean that's something that is I very never nice. Met. I was gonna talk about the aggro crag. I know we were talking about '90s TV shows. Do you remember? Guts? What if someone remade the aggro crag, but it was the Asro crag, and it was like a giant. <laughs> pile of shit not actual shit no no no, no. it would be actual shit <laughs> like you know mushy how, or hardened okay like, it's like so cow patties it. it's cow patties because they need to be able to climb it it's like it's cow patties but they let them harden but then like when There's, they start when they start putting the obstacles like the water running down the astro crack it softens, crack, it, up it, and softens it and they start to sink in fall in you could die like that's guts for a new generation Ooh. you can fucking die on this show they'd call this one butts do, do, do you have it? Ooh, do, 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 do you have it? Butts! <laughs> Nickelodeon's <coughs> old shows, man. Not like Nicktoons. We could fucking spend days talking about Nicktoons. I'm thankful for them. We'll leave it at that. What about? Let's talk about their game shows. Like yeah, remember, what is um, what is the one where the where they had the? It was like you, there was a video game mixed with like a board game. Are you talking about the uh, Nick Arcade? Nick Arcade. Remember Nick Arcade? Nick Arcade. I don't know why that's the song I remember from Nick Arcade. Dun 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 dun. Oh, what is the dude's name who hosted it? Mark Summers. Well, he was on Double Dare, but I figured he was the host of every show on he on Food Network and Nickelodeon. Yeah. Mark Summers. Mark fucking Summers. Oh, what was the hottie that was his co-host? What was her name? Suzanne Summers. I don't think it was Suzanne Summers. 
Double Dare, uh, Nick, Nick Arcade, Arcade Guts, Guts, Legends of, of the, the Hidden, Hidden Temple. Temple. Was the Mask thing's name Omac, or am I thinking of something? No. There have been so many franchises that have that. Like, Crash Bandicoot. Now you got me one. wondering, because I know that Omac is from the uh, from DC Comics. See, there's a problem. It's a DC character. There's the Mask in the Crash Bandicoot series. And then there's the big face from Legends of the Hidden Temple. Omac. It is Omac. It's Omac, not Omac, you fuck. I'm a piece of shit. Get with the, you are just the worst. So I can't be the only person that Omac kind of freaked out. He was fucking weird. He was a big concrete wall or stone wall that spoke to you. With red eyes. Kind of aggressive. Dead eyes. Like a doll's eye. So that and Guts would both be on. And I mean, these are like physical competitions, right, doing this stuff. Guts looked a little over the top. I'm like, holy fuck, you gotta go climb that mountain. Yeah, that's like Still Olympic. Like, that's like woo, Olympic. Yeah. Like future Olympians. Yeah, man, I ain't ready the for Legends of the Hidden Temple are just normal Who do kids. I look like? Michelle Kwan? <laughs> that was a figure skater or something, right? I don't I think. know. You know what else was cool about Guts? It was that period where everything had to be extreme! Extreme! We're missing shows like this. Shows yeah. that encourage kids to get out and go be active. That's true. Like, there are no... There's no Nickelodeon guts. There's no Legends of the Hidden Temple. There's no kids going out, going outside and playing in trees and climbing shit and saying, Oh, I'm going to find some shit for Olmec. They're all yeah. sitting on their sofa drinking their Dew SA, eating fucking popcorn. Oh, I love Dew SA, though. It's delicious and it tastes like freedom. <laughs> and a lot of sugar, but I mean... We grew up with video... Like, we were born... Right after the video game era kicked off. We That's were, another thing I'm thankful like, for. I was born in 86. NES comes out in 85. So it's like, we were born in this golden age where we grew up and we with gaming. Be, we should be thankful for that. We, I am. Like, like I love that I grew up after, you know, everyone thought video games were dead. After Atari yeah. crashed the market. People always say, like, oh, kids, all they want to do is play games and shit never go outside. How did, I mean, when we were in high yeah, school, how did we PS2 was that? out. Let me tell you. I was obsessed when I was in high school, before I got a PS2, with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Me and my friend Chrome would literally play that every fucking day during yep. the summer. However, we'd also go spend like six hours at the neighborhood pool. We'd go play basketball for hours. We'd wander all over the place. So it's like, we'd play Manhunt. You ever played that? Oh, yeah. Hide and Seek. which That's like Hide and Seek. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm huge. <clears throat> That's something I'm thankful for. If we're on the subject Man of playing outside... Awesome. The good old days where it's like you go out in the neighborhood and you're like, okay, first we got to set the boundaries. No bullshit and going over to the next neighborhood. You stay in this neighborhood. I'm thankful for action movies of the oh, 80s and yeah. 90s. Brian is going to speak a lot on this because he is obsessed it. with them. The good old days, man, where you had unlimited ammo. The good guys yeah. couldn't even... Fuck dying. They just couldn't get hurt. They were... <laughs> but somehow they always had blood on them. Pretty much. Was it someone else's blood every time? Most of the time. It was. <laughs> or wounds that would have been debilitating to normal people, and they just kind of like shrug it off, rub some dirt in it, and keep going. We could sum up this entire conversation with one word. Commando. <laughs> if you've seen that movie, or if you haven't, go watch it. And at that point, you've basically seen every 80s action stereotype you need to. I'm thankful for stairs because hopefully when the robots try to take us over one day... All we gotta do is go up some stairs. Or down like, some stairs. They're like Ed 209 and they fall down stairs. Like a stoop would be enough to stop the robot apocalypse. We've said we're thankful for poop humor, but I don't think we can, you know, say enough how thankful we are for it. We really are. Like, Our first ever I've, video was filled with poop humor. I feel like in the last couple of videos, we've kind of let, let up on the, the poop talk. Well, it's because, again, guys, we don't script anything except for like the first five minutes of some of our Halloween videos that had a yeah, storyline. You, you can definitely tell the ones we script. This shit all comes off the top of our heads. We don't force poop humor. So, I mean, if a game's got a projectile weapon that is shit... This is literally a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the power props. Well, okay, that is one thing I'll on give everyone. this game that Mario Kart doesn't have. So what, you get shit? The, one last thing that we're thankful for, Black Friday. Oh. Because all those movies that I don't buy all year because I don't want to pay $25 for a Blu-ray are suddenly $7. I hate Black Friday. 
I actually enjoy though going to look for like DVDs and maybe a few leftover games you? because you go to a store it's like a fucking zombie plague <laughs> because if you go to Walmart right when it opens that day it's just crowded there's thousands of fucking people in there and it's a massacre if you walk in at like 5 p.m and it's just oh like, my god it's like a carcass that's been picked clean by Dude, vultures all of like the cardboard displays that are temporarily there are torn asunder there's dvds laying around with the case open and the disc stopped in half and like you're digging through shit and you'll find like oh god here's a copy of furious 7 i've been looking for this it's three dollars someone just okay. snatches it from you one of the leftover people who was stuck in the Black Friday ruckus, they're hidden in a clothes rack like a zombie going... <laughs> the final thing that we're that we're thankful for and not to be cheesy, but we love you guys. We do.